As a filmmaker, one of the things that I deal with on a day-to-day -day is a massive amount of footage. Client projects tend to take up a lot of space and YouTube videos pile on very fast. So in this video, I wanna walk you through how I organize everything, how I label all of my projects for clients, and how I archive literally terabytes and terabytes of data. What's going on guys? It is archive day here in the office and I am finally at a stopping point to where I can offload everything off my computer and finally into portable hard drives to never be seen again. So usually I just kind of do this periodically, but I decided to film it this time and kind of let you guys in on how I organize everything, how client stuff is separate from YouTube stuff, how I store everything, what's the best solution, how do I work, just all the questions that you've had, I am here to answer them. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be super organized in your digital life and you won't make the same mistakes that I did. So what was the problem? The problem was I was very disorganized. I lost tons of files. Clients would ask me for stuff and I would no longer have a copy of it. And I usually only kept one copy of everything that was digital. Terrible, terrible habits. I know, I know, but I am a changed man. All right, what are we going to do today? I'm going to step over to my computer so I can walk you guys through the standard process that I go through. Now the process is not perfect by no means, but this will save you lots of heartache in the future. Okay, so we are here at the desk. And before we get too deep into my workflow, I just wanna explain hard drives to you guys really, really quickly because there are a few tips and tricks in here to helping you find out what's the best hard drive that you either want to work off of or you want to store your stuff on. This is pretty much it. The best thing you want to want is really fast memory. Now, the most universal and well-known memory are solid state drives. They've gotten a lot cheaper over the last few years and they are so easy to edit off of and so really well known. 10 out of 10 would recommend a solid state drive if you are editing from a computer and you feel like your footage is loading slow or things are just a little slowed down in Premiere, get you a solid state drive because it's going to help out so much. Now me personally, I try my best to work off solid state drives, but sometimes I edit off the slower internal HDD drives that are in my computer. Essentially, they are mass storage drives, but they are a lot slower. Solid states are a lot faster, but you get a lot less space on them. The overall goal for me as a PC user is to edit off of M.2 drives. M.2 drives are insanely fast. They are essentially an upgrade that you can add to your computer and it's one of the best things to work off of. So if you want insanely fast speeds, like three gigs a second transfer speeds, get you an M.2 drive. The downside to M.2 drives is they're very, very expensive sometimes. Okay, all right, nerd talk out of the way. So what do I use? Samsung T5 drives and Samsung T7 drives. You can see the T7 is a little taller. But the T5 drives I mainly use for my black magic and I write to camera and I just use this for quick projects. The T7s, I buy two terabyte external T7 drives. These things are wicked fast, they are super reliable, and I really enjoy working from them. So to avoid slow transfer speeds, to avoid slow loading, get a, get a fast external hard drive. I'll link this one below because this is really my favorite one. Okay, so enough of my rambling. Let's get into how I actually edit my files. So here we are on my desktop. I have this nice blue color to complement my background. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hop into my main editing hard drive. This is a 12 terabyte super slow drive and I've separated it into two different things. That's YouTube and freelance. We're gonna hop into the freelance folder here and I have broken it down into different things that I do. Um, soon I won't be doing most of these, but I'm just gonna hop into film. I didn't break that down by client and bread is who I usually work the most with. So you get to see a real world example of how my photo system looks. Now there's some NDA stuff. We're not gonna talk about that. And here is how I organize. So usually I organize stuff by the date that I film it. So I can just go in, automatically know what they automatically know, you know, what is happening. And then I cooperate that with a notion board for active projects, different video. I'll get to that later. So if you want to see how I organize my stuff, so let's just look at the tree farm. This is how I organize every project that comes through my computer 
through me, through my editor, everything is organized in this exact same way. If we hop out of here, we hop into a different one, same folder system. Like every folder system is the exact same. It creates consistency. It creates, you know, just, I know exactly where things are among multiple projects. So if I have assets, I put them in my assets folder. Those are in cards and things like that. If I have audio from the boom mic, all of that goes in here. If I have Premiere files, any kind of file system, I know it goes in my files folder. Footage from the Black Magic, footage from the Sony, all of that goes in the footage folder. Music that I license, photos that we take on the day of, if I'm there doing photography, and the actual renders for the clients. Everything is very well organized. When I transfer things off the SD card or off the hard drives for the Black Magic, they immediately go into a folder system like this and I create a duplicate of that. Now, duplicates are so, so important. That's why I have two T7s, two T5s. Even when I archive, I archive on two duplicate hard drives. You always want to have backups of any and everything you do. Get into the habit of if you're gonna buy a drive, buy it twice. That's enough said. So essentially when I'm editing, I'm editing from the SSD, I'm editing from the internal drives. And of course there are doubles of everything. Now, when I am ready to archive, I take all of these folders, any and everything that I'm working on, and I put it on one of these. Now this isn't sponsored, this is just one of the drives I like. This is a 16 terabyte external hard drive. I got this drive for like, I don't know, like two, $300. Essentially, I bought this and of course, you buy it twice because I need to back up everything in double locations and put them in different areas in my house just in case I'm on fire. Now, a fun tip that you may want to practice is when you get your footage in, if you don't have a ton of space and if you don't have, you know, just a ton of cash to spend, get you one of like these hard drives, these are an additional HDD drive. Essentially, just take the footage. If I were just to do this in folders, I would just take at least the footage and maybe the Premiere file, because that will save you so much time just in case something gets lost or corrupted. You always wanna have backups of footage if you're working with client material. But in my personal opinion, I would ask that you be like me and be super paranoid about everything, even if it hasn't happened to you. So archiving takes quite a while. And when everything is done, when all of these folders are off of my hard drive, I archive them two different locations and I start the process again. I go back and I start labeling by date. I go in, I make sure all folders are exactly the same. Everything is perfectly matched. And it's just important to practice these habits because don't lose out on money for a client because you had a hard drive fail. Don't have to have that conversation. You can preemptively save yourself a little bit of heartache if you practice proper digital organization. In summary, the best drives are fast drives. So if you can afford to spend money on two terabyte Samsung T7s or whatever drive you prefer, as long as it's super fast, you can edit from it and you will see a massive increase in speeds, transfer speeds, just overall 10 out of 10 would recommend. Number two, duplicate everything always. Like if you import it from your SD card and it is no longer on the SD card, you better have two copies of it. That's just the best way to do things. Just duplicate everything always and save yourself lots and lots of heartache. Number three, keep things organized. Organize it by date, organize it by client, organize it by the freaking file type that it is. As I said, I have assets, audio, files, footage, music, photos, and renders. That's just what I know I go through the most. So if you can keep things organized, it is the best feeling when like I had a client the other day, they said, hey, we need you to go and pull something from February. He was like, hey, do you have that footage that you know that you shot back in February of this church and this coffee shop? We need to make that into a web video. I was like, oh crap. 
I do have that footage and I feel really good because my archiving instantly paid off. <laughs> Usually I wouldn't have stuff like that, but it's just the small things. Keep them, keep up with them and save yourself lots of heartache. Also another benefit of keeping things organized, when you need to hire somebody or when you need to have an editor come in and behind you or you need to show them how your footage is or how the folder is laid out. The editor I have currently, I just send him this exact copy he goes and does whatever he needs to. He sends me the Premiere file and any assets that he added to my footage. And now we both have exact copies. And Premiere has no trouble finding everything. It's just a dream to work with. And of course, if I need to give him a hard drive, I keep a copy on my computer and he keeps a copy on his. And lastly, archive forever. I know I said it earlier, but I cannot <laughs> stress it enough. I have like 35 terabytes of stuff archived and duplicated just because you never know when you're going to need it. It has saved me so much time. And plus I used to have this bad habit of not archiving anything. I tried to go look for stuff I did back in high school or stuff I did in early college years. And I only have like one copy of it or I lost it or it's just stuff I don't have keep duplicates, keep online duplicates, do whatever you got to do to keep yourself reliable. And that is going to keep you ahead of the game. Okay, so for those of you who are wondering, just an additional tip, this is my computer, this is my baby. I custom built computers and whatnot. But inside I have 20 terabytes of slow but large storage. I usually work off of SSDs. I have an internal M.2. I have two more shipping in because I am full committing to this workflow. And if you have something that you would recommend, if you have a way that you do it that you wanna to recommend to others, leave it in the comments below because let's get this conversation going and we can just be better digital people, you know, and just keep everything simplified and awesome. So let's kick this thing back to the main setup so we can outro this video. All right, I hope you learned a lot from that. I hope you become a better person digitally and I hope you get to keep up with things more proficiently and you know just kind of just kind of learn the lessons that I had to go through the hard way <laughs> but with that all being said that's all I have for today guys so if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you loved it consider subscribing because I'm gonna bring you more content just like this every week so you guys stay safe you love and I will see you in the next one peace